Hey, what's up guys? So today we got a uh, walk-in cooler that's at 48 degrees. According to the locations management, it's been at 48 degrees basically all day. So we're going to get in there and see what's going on. It's been a minute since I've gotten to work on a walk-in cooler, so this will be fun. I've already mentally prepared by binge watching all of Chris Stefanovic uh, from HVACR, watching all of his videos before before I get into this service call. So, I should be ready. It's time for a big picture diagnosis. All right? So follow me, guys. Let's go see what's going on here. All right, guys, we are at temperature right now. That's only because they had the walk-in freezer door open for a little while here. So, there's our low profile coil. As you can tell by the arrows, air goes in, comes out the sides, right over there, right over there. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a quick peek at the inside, make sure the evaporator's clean, uh, and then I will probably go over there to the thermostat, right there, and see if we're calling for cooling, which we probably are not right now because we're at temperature because the freezer drawer was open, so I'll just hang on to that sensing bulb for a little bit and warm it up, and then see if that thermostat is actually functioning. Then we will go from there, but we're not froze up or anything, so that's a good sign. A little bit of frost on the coil. Not terrible, though. So. Not sure if it's actually picking it up on camera, but looking through this fan blade, the evaporator is clear. It is clean. A little bit of dirt, but nothing that should... Um, keep it from not working. Our finger guards are pretty dirty though, so we might pull those off and clean those real quick today. But first, we'll get to the, the major issues, and then we'll get to the cosmetic issues. Alright, going directly to our solenoid here. Wired up for 240. Testing my blue and my black. It's basically showing zero volts, so I should be reading 208, and I'm not. So let's go back to our thermostat. That is now our suspect. So we have zero volts going across there. Our thermostat is closed. I just turned it down. I'm 99% sure when I was checking it earlier, it was it was open because it was satisfied because again, the freezer door was left open. So the potential difference that I read before was just the thermostat being open. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but our solenoid is open and I hear what seems to be an underfed TXV. There's a little bit of a hissing noise. So I think it's just about time to jump up on the roof. Alright guys, we are up on this freezing cold roof in front of um, what I'm 97% sure is our cooler coil, or our cooler condensing coil, condensing unit, whatever you want to call it. Uh, real quick, I'm basing that decision on, uh, I'm pretty sure it's not our freezer because we don't have an X terminal, you know? Um, and usually our X terminal is our defrost termination switch, and then also our number four, or is it number three? Yeah, number three would be our heaters, and we don't have a number three. So, and then also you can just tell by the uh, the line set. If you ever have any, I guess, issue locating a unit, and you it's not labeled, and you can't determine what it is based on uh, the defrost setup, you know, just look at the line set compared to the building. This one's pretty easy. Right underneath me is my cooler. 
and then right over here towards the back of the building is my freezer so it's pretty easy but that's not always the case it's not always going to be straight down like it is here but anyway back to the subject at hand we are in defrost now i am gonna guess we're just stuck in defrost and uh that's what's going on here but i'm not 100 percent sure so we are just going to make a mental note of where that arrow is right now right there and we're gonna sort of walk away and come back in about 10 minutes just to see if it's advanced on its own i don't want to move it and um let's say it's one little bad spot in the gear or this this motor in the back of that and if i turn it and see if it's physically stuck then i'll break it free and it might start working and then i'll you know, call it good and, and move on and then we'll be back in I don't know, 24 hours or whenever it gets stuck again so i'm gonna leave it the way it is come back in 10 minutes and see if it's advanced each one of those little tabs is only 15 minutes so it should come out of defrost in about 10 15 minutes here well guys our defrost clock did come out of defrost on its own it's in refrigeration mode right now so that's apparently not our problem my main issue right now see yeah, up here so you can see that so right here look real close we got a lot of bubbling in our sight glass so let's pull this cover off and uh, further investigate this little deal obviously I've gauged up to the system I ran my electronic leak detector all around the condenser uh, I'm getting a hit right here at the bottom of the king valve as well as the uh, the port on the other side of the king valve so I'm just gonna verify that I have some sort of leak with bubbles because it is really cold out here and who knows my leak detector could be messing up anyway guys I took the uh, cap off my king valve I tightened up that packing gland and there's no more bubbles coming out of the uh, the port on the side there and you'll see a lot of bubbles on there that's just because there was some air trapped in there as I was screwing the cap back on but we are free and clear. Confirmed with bubbles when I was done, of course. Now we're gonna power it on and uh, add some gas. You'll notice I don't have a scale. I weighed the tank downstairs. I'm just gonna fill it up because it's, it's about 10 degrees outside right now. So I'm gonna clear my sight glass. And in doing so, clearing my sight glass at a 10 degree ambient temperature, um, I am pretty well confident that I have my winter charge so we should have to worry about it the only thing I am worried about is not having enough pressure in this tank to get anything done I could have probably taken the tank and uh, put it in a sink full of hot water for a little bit but did not do that I think I'll be able to suck it in see sight glass is almost cleared already all right guys let me wrap this up and I'll bring it back around here in just a few minutes we're all charged up sight glass is clear uh, high, high side pressure is a little bit low I'm gonna double check my headmaster back there using my hands it doesn't feel like it's it's um, not in bypass mode anyway. It is bypassing the, the condenser. So I got my discharge back here coming in. And then going right in through, through the headmaster body and my receivers. Feels about the same temperature. And then the line down at the bottom, which is the liquid line off the bottom of the condenser, feels nice and cold. Let's see... It's an LAC-148. So, 
I believe that's uh, going to maintain 148 PSI. All right, so we got 20 degrees of uh, compressor superheat, 21 degrees subcooling right there. Oh, and something uh, kind of funky that I don't know if you guys have noticed, but uh, I haven't seen too many of these in, out in the wild yet. So here's my liquid line coming out of my receiver, goes down into my sight glass. That's kind of hard to see back here, but then it goes back and the loops back into the bottom of the condenser where it looks like it makes one final loop around. Then it comes out here, goes through my filter dryer, and then goes downstairs. So looks like they're just, uh, I guess, um, subcooling the liquid after it comes out of the receiver, I guess. So anyway, that's cool. Literally subcooled. Real quick, guys, this headmaster valve here, the LAC 4-148. I did find a Sporlin document just to confirm that the nomenclature 148 does mean 148 PSI. So I'll put a, uh, a quick little screen cap of that here in the video. Yeah, we are apparently maintaining just about 148 PSI, um, which seems kind of low to me, but uh, I guess I'm not an engineer, so apparently that TXV can handle it. Evaporator temperature is a little bit cold, but I had to uh, I had to set my thermostat downstairs down to 20, so we could be running really really cold right now. So I'm gonna get down there and uh, crank that back up to 35 before it freezes up. All right, we just cycled off at about 32.5 degrees. You can tell. I mounted the sensing bulb in a uh, much better location. It was just under that strap, and obviously with that strap, it's gonna read wall temperature, um, possibly even the metal strap temperature. And also I mounted it horizontally just because I sort of view them as sensing bulbs for TXV where they may have a small liquid charge in there. And if you mount them vertically, that liquid will run down into the cap tube and you may get some um, some fluctuations is the technical way to put it, I guess. Uh, but yeah, we're at 33 degrees. Now you might be wondering why I run them so low. I'm running it this low per the facility uh, manager. He wants me to run it at 32, off at 32 exactly. And he wants to come back on about 35 to 38 degrees uh, because they do store deli meats in here. So that's what he wants. This system does have, have a defrost clock as you saw, so uh, we don't really run the risk of, of it freezing up. So anyway, guys, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one.